Welcome, Mama, to the Postpartum Coach Podcast. Finally, a podcast dedicated just to the mental and emotional world of us postpartum women. I am your friend, fellow mama, and postpartum life coach, Lizzie Langston. After intense birth trauma, delivering my first child, and really scary mental health crises following the birth of my second and third baby, I set off on a six-year journey to understand postpartum mental health from the inside out. On this podcast, I bring you as a mom of four and a certified postpartum life coach, the tools you need to avoid mental health crashes, to get out of the postpartum rut, and to embrace a vivacious motherhood that you love from the inside out. Let's get you feeling like yourself again, mama, and welcome to the Postpartum Coach Podcast. Hi, my loves. It's Lizzie Elizabeth, you know, mother of four. What even is identity really, right? I am Lizzie. I am a life coach. I am a mom of four. Here's the deal. This is what I've been thinking about. I'm just diving right in. I decided to call this a summer short episode because it's like 1130 at night and, you know, I'm living my best mom life this summer. So I'm just being real with you, coming at you. <laughs> Short, short episode. I wanted to get straight to the point. So I just watched the most amazing movie. It was called Hitman. When I say it was the most amazing, I don't mean you're going to be like, wow, that was so inspiring. It actually had some like dark sides to it, but it was very well written. My husband and I both walked away from it being like, wow, that was so well done. And <laughs> anyway, in this, so highly recommend. I can't remember which streaming service it was on because it's late and I don't remember, but Hitman. Okay. So I was just thinking about it because in the movie, it's kind of cool. They juxtapose. So on the one hand, he's an undercover cop and um, he is pretending to be a hitman, hence the name of the movie. And then on the other uh, extreme of like the the other side of him in his real life is he's just like, uh, a college professor and kind of nerdy. And so anyway, it's interesting because as the movie plays out and his hitman self develops, and I'm not going to spoil anything, so I won't say more because it's, you know, go watch it if you haven't. But um, they parallel that with some of these lessons he's teaching to his students. And he is fascinated as a professor and just as a person by this whole idea and this concept of the self. And if you get into the research, if you want to nerd out, um, and, and I'm going to talk about how this relates to you postpartum and how it relates to us postpartum and sort of the trickiness with this. But basically, the self is a construct. It's something that we make up. And in the movie, they do say that research shows, I don't know how true it was because it was like in the movie, one of the actors said it <laughs> in the characters. I'm like, I, I haven't fact checked this. But I wouldn't be surprised if it was true, which is that um, it has been shown that adults can totally change personality. Um, so it's not like only when you're a developing teenager can your personality ebb and flow, morph. But the main core tenets of your personality can actually change um, in, a, in, in a moment. And uh, you can just be different. And so towards the end of the movie, the the question they kind of pose, and I don't I don't feel like this is giving anything away, is basically it's like, who do you want to be? Um, you know, whatever. So now I'm gonna go back to postpartum mental health for a moment because I've lived, and this is I'm gonna be teaching this just from my personal experience and from my spiritual guide, you know, position as a, a woman who serves postpartum women take it if it helps you, leave it if it doesn't. So as I experienced multiple episodes of depression, and then I proceeded to get through them and become a life coach. And then the thing is through life coaching, excuse me, I was able to get safer in my body than I've ever been in my life. And in so doing, there have been some paradigm shifts as I look at the earlier parts of my life. In my my entire life. And I think this is somewhat normal for people, but the thing with postpartum is it 
it kind of like, you know, when you're the new person at school, maybe you just moved in and everyone's like, hi, what's your name? And even if you've never been in that position, just imagine it. I actually was in that position. I moved in to a brand new high school halfway through sophomore year. Not very, very begrudgingly, might I add. (laughs) My mom had gotten remarried, so I had to move. And I was really bummed because I had a boyfriend and all things, you know, 16-year-old life, living the best life, all the sports, the things we care about. All right, anyway. But there's this moment when somebody, like a whole group of people doesn't know who you are. And they're like, what's your name? You know? Tell us about yourself. And you can literally be who you want, say what you want, right? Like my name's Elizabeth. I could have gone by Betsy. I could have gone by Beth. I could have gone by Lizzie. And it's so malleable, this identity. Now, here's what happens though. The ego, okay, is the part of us that wants to attach to identity. The ego is the part of us that craves to not just have an identity, but to never change it, to know it always. And it's the part of us that feels very comforted when we say the same things over and over again, like, oh yeah, my name's Lizzie, I'm a life coach, and you know, I have this many kids, and I live in this place, and whatever. There is a part of us that finds solace or comfort or a sense of safety in our built identity. But the problem becomes that as we start having babies and we start shifting into our 20s and 30s and 40s, naturally and in a very healthy sense, we start to, it's called individuate. We start to individuate. So while we might have been raised in a family system or in a religion or with a certain perspective on education and higher education or political views, right? You guys know that these are all subject to change. And that actually is okay. And it's actually a good thing. The tricky thing is two things. Number one, actually, I'm maybe I might just share one thing because I don't want to go too broad and too wide on this topic. But here's what I've seen postpartum. Here's what I've experienced postpartum. And um, if you feel scared or concerned about your mental health, but specifically if you're really freaked out by it, I want to I wanna let you know maybe a piece as to why it's been so scary for you. Because when you identify, so this is what happened with me. I identified as a happy person. I identified as a woman who uh, didn't really have a ton of needs and was just always serving others and enjoyed doing that and was really fun. I mean, I was so peppy genuinely most of the time. In high school, I remember somebody asking me like, what are, what are you on? Like, what do you take to be this happy at school? And I was like, nothing. Like, I just genuinely, you know, it's all good. And so when I was in the throes of anxiety, in the throes of depression, um, couldn't even finish my sentences. My brain was so fuzzy. Wasn't acting like, quote, myself. Anytime you say the word self, do you see how much we rely on it? It is our anchor. We're like, but my, but I'm not acting like myself. And I mean, if I could create a slogan in one phrase that sums up all of the women I've talked to, their main desire over the last, you know, uh, over 120 women on consultations and multiple life coaching clients. It is, I want to feel like myself again. And there might be some other desires, like I want to learn a lot through this experience or I want to understand why I got depressed in the first place. But ultimately, they're really hoping they can just feel like themselves again. But who are you? The self that you were feeling like before you got into this weird, funky postpartum-ish, was she really you? Now, I know these questions can be a little disturbing and alarming and kind of like shake you up a little bit, and yet here is the one piece of wisdom. I want to just leave it with you. Take it for what you will. Try it on. Play with it in your life. In my experience which again, I've lived three depressive episodes and I'm talking like dark depression, Um, specifically my very first time because I I really didn't know what was going on and it was was just beyond scary to not even have words, right? By the second and third time, even though it was not pleasant, I didn't fight it so hard and I kind of knew more or less my coping go-tos and whatever. And especially with the third episode, it was post-life coaching and so I was able to really use a lot of those tools. But as I look back, and I, um, 
at these the the, the timing of these three episodes of, of depression and and also who I thought I was. I can see how my body was unveiling to me who I really am. And this is just my personal experience, okay? And that doesn't mean you shouldn't get medical support or try to make yourself comfortable or treat your symptoms, okay? But at the end of the day, my personal belief is that depression and anxiety are deeply sacred, deeply sacred parting of the veil. If you work with them, that doesn't mean you can't get support. It doesn't mean you should feel bad for seeking support, okay, and, med- and medical help and intervention. I highly recommend that you do have those conversations. But if you, and, okay, and I believe that you can also work with these different communications that your body is giving you to understand the truth that is trying to come through, the truth about who you really are. Now, spoiler alert, we are all not, you know, we are all spiritual beings having a human experience. We are all pure consciousness. We are all I am. Like Jesus said, I am that I am. Like that is the essence of each of us. We are all so much bigger than like our little ego identity of like, I'm a teacher and I'm a good person and I like to cook pasta. (laughs) Like we are none of those. All of it's an illusion. So if all of it's an illusion and you're scared shitless about the way your mind seems to be F-U-C-K-E-D right now. Sorry, I'm like, I know you guys listen with kids sometimes. I know I do. So (laughs) I, I would appreciate not dropping that. Okay. Anyway, so If our identities are possibly, I'm not saying you have to believe yours is an illusion, but if our identities are an illusion anyway, because we are, and and, and if we're like so attached to them, then postpartum, wherever you find yourself on the spectrum of mental health, and please do, please do get support. Please do seek out professional help. Please do. And also keep in mind that it's possible that there could be new ways of seeing who you are and what you were born on this earth to do that can only be seen by you through the hugely paradigm shifting experiences of this inner turmoil, this inner challenge, this inner mind um, confusionary of postpartum anxiety and postpartum depressiveness. So that is my short and sweet little episode for you today. You know you can get all the free resources on my website, lizzielangston.com. They're also in the show notes, which is just the links that go with this episode. Um, You guys, if you haven't left me a review ever, I would so, so, so appreciate it. But Honestly, I just like, yeah, I, you guys reviewing would be helpful because I have not been marketing myself because I am deep in presence with my babies and honestly myself. And I'm not going to share, uh, behind the scenes because it's all, um, honestly private and to keep myself feeling safe. But, um, yeah, I've been present for some really good reasons this summer, like deeply present more than I typically would be. Even if it was summer with my kids home, there's been other things that I've needed to be present with and I'm really glad that I have. But what that means is that I'm asking for you guys to help me when it comes to putting the word out there. Um, You know, if this has been helpful to you, if you've ever benefited from my Instagram or one of my emails, like please maybe just share my name, share my podcast with a friend, um, maybe send them the link to my free mini course or one of my free resources. Um, And again, I don't, you know, really care if they end up hiring me. I mean, cool. Yeah, but I know I'm not for everyone. But what I do love, what I do love the idea of, and I know is good in the world all the time, it's always a fit, is helping women postpartum get more free support and resources because heaven knows they need them. Okay, I hope this was helpful to you. I will see you right here next week on the Postpartum Coach Podcast. Happy 4th of July yesterday for those in America celebrating Independence Day. I love you guys. 444. Hey, Lizzie here. I've helped dozens of postpartum moms just like you 
to manage their postpartum anxiety and deconstruct their postpartum depression. It's really easy for me. So if you're ready to feel better, I know the way. Let's chat on the phone. Set up a time by going to lizzylangston.com forward slash consult. It's pretty simple and I will be calling you soon.